morning guys, we just arrived in Nazareth. Here we're gonna show you some huge waves, some amazing fishing traditions, and some hidden gems of the city. But first we're gonna start from this beach, which is the main beach, and it's known as one of the best beaches in Portugal. So long before Nazareth was a tourist destination, it used to be a fishing village filled with colorful boats just like the ones you see here behind me. However, once they built a new harbor, they moved all the working boats there, but they still left the traditional ones here on the main beach to display the heritage and the history of Nazareth as a fishing village. Right next to the fishing boats, right on the beach, there's a traditional fishing market where they still upkeep the same traditions as they used to of drying the fish and selling it right here to all the tourists. But the tourists are not here, so sales are kind of low. Yeah, and we saw one very lovely grandma, and she was sitting there with her one row of fish. And uh, when we came, she asked us to record her, and then we decided to buy a few fish there, and she teared up, honestly. I didn't sure. think we made her day. You like fish. Fish is your favorite. She doesn't know how to eat it, maybe. Just, ow. It's like a treat, Cosmo. Super confused. Mm -hmm. So Nazareth is split in two districts, the beach and the main city, or the new and old town. And people recommend to stay in the old town because the accommodation is cheaper, shopping, restaurants, dinners, everything. And also, the best views are from those cliffs, and that's where we are heading to. highest surfable waves on the planet. Why did it happen? Because there is an underwater canyon that creates the breakers at a certain point of the year, particularly during stormy weather or high tides, and you can spot the waves here that are up to 100. And surfers absolutely love the spot here. They break all kinds of records. The latest one in 2017, there's the guy from Brazil that surfed an 84 foot wave. That's 24 meters, guys. And just right here on the other side is an iconic spot where you can overlook both beaches as well as those surfers. The waves here are so big and they crash so close to the coast that it's impossible for the surfers to go out there over the waves themselves. So as you can see, they're being pulled by jet skis to get them out there far enough to the big waves so they can ride them before they crash. If you're just strolling through the streets, you'll see a lot of different art and graffiti, whether that's on the azulejos on the walls or just paintings everywhere. The one behind me is an example of how they used to pull in the ropes. They, the men would go out there and they throw the fishing nets. And an hour and a half later, the women, the kids and the men would pull in the ropes full of fish through the sand. So that's what this one is an example of. And as we talk about the traditions, we cannot mention the traditional outfit. Even in the market, we saw ladies wearing the skirt with seven petticoats. Why exactly seven? People made a lot of versions. It's like one um, for every day of the week. Seven colors of the rainbow, seven waves of the ocean. But the most realistic one is that back in the days, ladies stood on the beach um, waiting for their husbands to come home from sailing. And it was super cold, so they had to wear seven petticoats to cover their back, legs, arms, everything to stay warm. Nowadays you'll see a lot of people do that for tourists to sell their accommodations, souvenirs and everything, but we still saw a few ladies wearing the seven petticoats just to respect the local traditions. What are you doing? I walk here and record people's butt. Why? <laughs> Look up when you're there. Look at these ones. It's like a 
<laughs> How many churches has Cosmo visited in his life? Oh, too many to count, all over the world. Very religious dog. This was at the city center. We found a little cute shop where the guys making the traditional fishing boats. Uh, miniature version. But if you're ever here, come visit. The owner's really nice. He let us go inside, take some pictures and videos. So if you're ever here, great place to get a souvenir. Posso fazer uma festa? Olá! 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 We are a little bit lost here, but uh, already a few people stopped and uh, showed us the directions. They tried to talk to us, but Cosmo, I think here are the most kind people we've met in Portugal so far. Tá saindo madame com pãozinho e salame. Amanhã você se serve, pega o que quiser. A noite caiu tomando meu vinho, fez do meu ouvido. You know when you come back from vacation and you feel like you need another vacation. So I think if you're ever in Portugal and you go to Porto or Lisbon, come here to end your vacation here because I think Nazare is a perfect vacation from your vacation. Here you'll find the breathtaking views, one of the kindest people in Portugal and truly unforgettable waves. I think Nazare will take a very special place in our hearts. to spend outside the city. We heard that there is a very nice monastery and also a village not far away from here and we've been recommended to visit it so many times. Yeah, but to be honest, the weather looks terrible over there. It looks yeah. like a storm, but we'll try to make the best of it. Hopefully the sun stays out. So. The most important to start the day right and we are going to grab some coffee and eat the pastries that we've been eating every single day since we arrived to Portugal. I don't think it's the most delicious breakfast I've ever tried, but it's definitely the most addictive dessert I've ever tried. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much made from eggs, so if your mom's ever forcing you to eat eggs, just tell her to bake you the Portuguese dessert, and I think she'll have to do it. Let's hit the road. King is ready. Why you should visit Obidos? It's one of the most picturesque places in the central of Portugal. It's like a movie set, but the difference is everything here is real and authentic. And the whole town is surrounded with huge walls, but inside it's so charming and elegant. I would say it's like a Portuguese fairy tale. Such a beautiful city, babe. <laughs> Picture in every corner. Look, I told you, like this movie set. All the trees from Harry Potter, that was beating people up. That's why there's no tourists here. So the city is so beautiful and well preserved because it was given to the Queen of Portugal on the day of her wedding. And this tradition has been upkept from the 13th all the way to the 19th century. Cosmo has such a nice walk, you know? Uh -huh. Like model. At least one of us do. <laughs> Enjoying the view of the whole city over here. One of the main attractions to do here is to just walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive. I like it you're still recording. Can I come save me? I was recording Cosmo's reaction. <laughs> you didn't want to save him, huh? <laughs> One of the main attractions of the city is the castle walls. It's 13 meter high, so the main touristy thing to do is to climb to the top and circle the whole 
city, which is uh, 1.5 kilometers long, and have the most beautiful views, panoramic views of the outside as well as the inside of the city. When you're on top of the city walls, you'll notice these arcs. There's three kilometers of them, and what they used to do is they used to bring water from a nearby spring all the way to the city center fountain. A new trick I've learned. He's confused why two cameras are facing him. <laughs> Which one is recording? Which one should I smile to? <laughs> when you're here at the main square, pay attention to the pillar over there because it has some historical background dating back to the Roman times when they used to chain the criminals here as well as hang them naked and people would throw objects at them. I think tomatoes, the Rinka said, probably shoes. Makes more sense. Probably rocks to be honest. So what is ginger made from? Uh, uh, this is the liquor of sour sherry. Uh -huh. Sour sherry is a fruit. And um, we, we have the, the trees here nearby. Um, and we made the liquor uh, with the sour sherry, staged for 14 months with uh, alcohol, 100% natural, extract, uh, extracted by cereals, uh, and uh, uh, sugar, water, and mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> great, so everything is pretty local because you said it produces yes, right yes, here. Yes. That's great. This is from, from here. The, we called uh, liquor of sour sherry, ah. uh, liquor uh, de ovich. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. Here. Thank you. So here's the real reason we came to Obidos because here you can try the traditional Portuguese drink, ginger, which is served here or traditionally in a chocolate cup as well as a little sherry inside. 20% alcohol. But it's supposed to be really sweet. Mm. Cherry has a pit. It was very sweet, but delicious. <laughs> mm. Best in the end? Mm -hmm. Dark chocolate is not very sweet. So, so perfect, perfect combination. combination yeah. <laughs> sweet, sour, and then good chocolate at the end. He really mm -hmm. wants to try get the white chocolate. So to give a kiss, they said. Mm -hmm. Portuguese. <laughs> and I'm drinking it. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> The Quebec Monastery is another great attraction, just 50 minutes outside of Nazareth. It is built by the first king of Portugal and it is the first Gothic style building in the country. Gothic style was very unique then and it was very experimental and I think that's why this building turned out so beautiful and unique. that the Crown Prince Pedro was in love with before his father executed her. Very sad story, but the tome I think is the most beautiful one I've ever seen in my life. So here's the chapter house where all the questions related to life in the community will dealt with right here. And in 1180, they dedicated this place for all the abbots and they decided they all would be buried here. And of course, the most beautiful room of all is King's Hall, which is covered with these beautiful azulejos.